All right, in this video, we're gonna look at how to run a test bench on VHDL Kodi Hybrid and also how to add modules into a VHDL code. All right, so we start off with a brand new project. We're not gonna worry about programming to the board. All we're gonna look at is trying to figure out if the code we wrote is running correctly. So I started off by having this project have a single file in it. We are creating a full adder. So if you wanna pause the video, you can pause it and type in this code so you can follow along. So what we have is in this full adder, we have three inputs, an A input, a B input, a carry in input. We're gonna generate a sum and we're gonna generate a carry out. So if we look at the code, it is just the sum is A, XOR with B, XOR with carry in. The carry out is A and B, or A and carry in, or B and carry out. And this generates the code for a full adder. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is run a test bench on this to verify that this full adder is running correctly. So the way you would do it is you would go to add source. You're gonna go down to the bottom app option of add or create simulation source. You're gonna hit next. And you would hit a create file. You'll give it a name. Now I've already written code for this test bench. So we'll open up the code I've written. So we're gonna add a file. All of our files are in sources. So we'll go down to sources and we're doing a simulation. So the first one is we're gonna test just the full adder. Okay, so we'll hit okay on this file. And we will see what pops up is you should see something that says simulation. It probably will start off being closed up, but you can expand it down. And we have our test bench. Let me open up that file and we'll go through this. Key items on this test bench is you're gonna do an entity file with no inputs. So when you do create a file and it asks you if you want to put in inputs for how we did in the previous example, you're gonna leave it blank. We're gonna go down to the architecture section and we're gonna add in a component. This is when we're adding modules that we previous written into a VHDL file. So where do we get this component that we're gonna be adding in of a full adder? The way you do that is you're gonna go back to the test, the file you wanna test, which is in this case full adder. And you can just highlight this entire entity of the full adder. And you can copy it inside the architecture section. You could paste it. You're gonna change entity into component and change in, instead of full adder, you're gonna write component. So let me delete that and we come back to what we have. So we see we have component, full adder, in component. It has our A, B, carry in, sum, and carry out. The next thing we're gonna do is create signals. These signals are our inputs and our outputs. So I have a signal for every input and every output. So I have A, A, B, B, carry in, carry in, sum, sum, carry out, carry out. And we're gonna say they're all a single bit, which is our standard logic. Next thing we're gonna do is include that module. So when we include the module, you have to give it a name. So in this name, I just say it's a test bench, so TB. Then we're gonna give it a colon. We're gonna say which component we're gonna be using. I'm using the full adder. Then I'm gonna write port map. And in parentheses, I'm gonna assign every input into this component with the input of these signals. So we have A is connected to A, B is connected to B, carry in, carry in, sum, sum, carry out, carry out. 
Next thing we're gonna do is create a process. We're just gonna write process begin. And this is where we're gonna write in all the input we wanna test. So we're testing three inputs. We have an A, a B, and a carry in. So I have A is zero, B is zero, carry in is zero, and then we're gonna say wait for 100 nanoseconds. This will give us some time so we can see our outputs. Then I'm gonna write another sample that I wanna test of A0, B1, carry in a zero, we wait. Another test of zero, one, one, we wait. One, zero, zero, we wait. One, zero, one, we wait. One, one, zero, wait. One, 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 that gives us all of the eight options for a full adder. We wait 100 nanoseconds. We're gonna put a final wait, and then we'll have an end process. Okay, so we can save this. A key item you're gonna see is go down to the simulator. Some of this has already been set up because I have already written the code and ran it previously. But what you're gonna end up, normally what's gonna happen when you create it, it's gonna look something like this. You will see two files under this simulation. You will have your test bench and then we will have a full adder. Normally, since the full adder was the one created, it will have this little symbol on the side of it. That symbol says that is the file that we want to have compiled. We do not want the full adder to be compiled. We want the test bench to be compiled. So to set that, you highlight it, you right click, and you go down to the set as top. And that will configure the Xilinx software to say, I want the test file to be the one that's gonna be ran on. So we make sure that that is selected. And then we're gonna to go to the left-hand side to run simulation. And we're gonna run behavioral simulation. So once you run the behavioral simulation, you'll get some windows that pop up. Let me just adjust these. So you see that here is what we're testing on the waveform, A, B, carry in, some, carry out. And it has run for some period of time. So you have zoom in and zooms out over here. This one will just fit everything. So we see all zeros input. We got a sum of zero, the carry out of zero. We click over, when our input was zero, zero, one, we get a sum of one and carry out of zero. We go all the way to where everything is a one. A is one, B is one, carry in is one, we have a sum of one and a carry out of zero. So this will show that our full adder is running correctly. To close out of the simulation, you're gonna click the X on this blue bar. I'll say, okay, to close the simulation, you can hit okay and it'll close it down. All right, so let's say we want to take this full adder and make it in to a bigger project where we want to add four bits together. So you can make a new design file that's going to do four bits added together. I have previously done it already, so I'll add in that file. And that is what I call adder four bit. Okay, so adder for a bit. Let's open up this file. And it's gonna have as inputs, number one, number two, a sum and a carry out. The numbers we add are gonna be four bits. We'll generate four bits of a sum and a carry out. That is the fifth bit of what we're adding. So just like the test bench we previously did, we're gonna do a component. That component is the module we wanna add. The module we wanna add is the full adder. So component, full adder, A, B, carry in, sum, carry out. And then I'm gonna make some internal signals. This signal I'm gonna make, I'm gonna call it the temporary carry in. 
because I'm going to have to generate a carry n for every single four bits that we're going to be adding together. And that I'm going to make a vector of four down to zero. Now, the first carry n we're going to do for the, that zero bit is going to be a zero. So I'm going to predefine this. The temp carry n zero is the value zero. Whenever we want to define one bit, we're going to use single quotes. Then I'm going to make the module of the full adder be added into this project. So I'm going to name it B0 to be the first zero for bit of our adder. It's a full adder report map. And the full adder has inputs A, B, carry in, sum, and carry out. I'm connecting A to number one, bit zero, B to number two, bit zero, carry in to this temp carry in of bit zero. We generate the sum to bit zero, and the carry out becomes our temp carry in bit number one. Then I go down and I'm going to make the full adder for bit one. So again, I'm going to call this B1. A is going to get number one, index one, or bit one. B is number two, bit one. Carry n is temp carry n, bit one. Sum will generate sum of bit one. Carry out generates the next carry n, which is bit two. Then we're going to do it again for bit two. We see the same thing is happening. A is getting bit two, B is getting bit two. Cn is getting temp Cn bit two, sum is bit two, and we generate temp Cn of bit three. We go down to our last adder. We get bit three, bit three, 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 and we generate temp Cn of four. This last C out that we generate should be the final C out of this four bit adder. So we'll define that at the end. That carry out is temp cn bit number four. So now we have a four bit adder and we're gonna to wanna to test this. So again, we're gonna add in or create a test file. And I already written up a test file. So I'll go down to the test file I wrote. Test for a bit. So all the test files come down to simulation, test for a bit. And this is going to look similar to the full adder we did. There is no entity being defined on test for a bit. We add in the component of the four bits, making new signals of number one, number two, sum, that are vectors, and a carry out. So I'm going to make a test bench. Of adder four bit, I do the part map. The number one is number one, number two is number two, sum is sum, carry out is carry out. Going to make a process, right? Begin. Number one, here, number one is four bits. When we define multiple bits, we use two quotes. And first thing we're going to do is add zero, zero, we'll wait. Then we're going to add two of one and we're going to wait. We're going to add 1 and 1, and we're going to wait. And then we're going to add 15 with 1, which will give us number 16. Since this 1 plus 1 would generate a 0, and the carries will come across, we should see our sum be all zeros. And in this case only, we should have a carry out being equal to 1. We'll have a final wait, and then an end process. So if we look over here on the sources, the last thing we tested was just the full adder. That has been selected as the file to run the simulation on. We want this new file to be the one being executed. So we're going to select it, right click, set as top. OK, so we make sure that this is selected, the test for a bit. We're going to run our simulation, run behavioral simulation. Okay. 
And we see that our simulation runs. Let's fit it. And we can see that it says 0, 2, 1, F, 0, 1, 0, 3, 2, 0. What are these numbers is how do we want number 1, number 2, sum to be viewed as. So if we want to change this, let's, right, let's click on number 1. Then we right click. If we go down to radix, we can show or tell the simulator how do we want our number to be viewed. Let's say we want it as a binary number. I'll click binary, and I see that number one was defined as 000, 001, 001, 111. Maybe I want to view it as an integer, since I'm going to be showing addition being done. So let me change that to an unsigned decimal. Let me go ahead and change number two as an unsigned decimal. Sum as unsigned decimal. And if you look at this, zero plus zero is zero, two plus one is three, one plus one is two, 15 plus one will get us our 16, which is all zeros and a carry out of one. So I've shown how we can do a simulator for a larger item. Now in here, we did see that this full adder was made up of, this four bit adder was made up of four full adders. If we wanted to see details on those full adders, we could go down to the rightmost item. We're gonna have to expand a little bit to get names to pop up. And we see that the test bench has a B0 that's a full adder, a B1 that's a full adder, a B2, a B3. So let's say I wanted to see what was happening in B2. I click it. And then in this window, we are going to see that B2 is a full adder that was made up of A, B, carry in, sum, and carry out. So we could see internal and drill down into the different modules that we have. Let's say I wanted to see how this A changed over time. I'll click it, hold it, and drag it over. And I would see how A was modified throughout the time. Let's see if I want to see how that first bit, how its B was modified over time. I can click it and drag it out. And we see that once we get to, let me change this back to binary. Well, we're looking at the zero bit. So a zero is zero on B, a one is one all the way through. We get to see how the internal values were being used. You might find drilling down useful as you start debugging. And then again, to close out the simulation, we just close on this blue X. Close the simulation. This will say if you want to save the modifications you have done, the best thing to do is just to do this card. So then that way you can always have a clean setup of a waveform and just add in items as you need to. All right, so this concludes how to actually write a simulation and to test in different ways.